a while ago I made this tutorial about having actors of following along a spline in your Unreal Engine games. As a result of that, I've gotten a lot of questions on how you can make a mesh follow along a spline to make something like rail tracks. So simply changing around this spline will add new parts to this track, which is exactly what we'll be doing today. So if you want to follow along, let's get started. And there is a link down below in the description to the finished project file with the entire assets available for you to look through in the description down below to my Patreon. So first and foremost, you're going to need a static mesh, just a 3D model. And there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind there. The most important one being the direction that your mesh is facing. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that the mesh that you have is going to be orientated in the X direction, meaning that the X axis is going through your mesh like this. You can have it in the Y or the Z axis as well. And I'll mention the slight differences that that will make in the actual blueprint when we get to that. But for now, let's make our blueprint class and we're going to be making an act up and we'll call that something like BP mesh over spline. Opening that up, we're going to start off by adding a variable, which we'll call something like uh, mesh. We'll set that to being public and we'll make that of type static mesh. We'll need to scroll down a little bit until we see in object types here, static mesh, and we'll need a object reference to that. Then in our components, of course, we're going to need a spline because that's the entire point of this entire tutorial is we're going to put things along this spline. And from there, we can go into the construction scripts where we'll actually do all of the blueprint systems that we need. So first things first, we need this mesh, which we can just drag in, hold a control to get a reference. And we need the exact dimensions of it. This way, our system will automatically work perfectly with every single mesh that you could put into this. So what we'll do is dragging off this, we get bounding box. And if we split that structure pin, we get a minimum value and a maximum value. And we want to make sure that neither of these values have negative numbers in them. So what we get is the absolute value for them. So we do that for both. And then we simply add these together with a simple addition node. If we split the structure pin here on the results, we now have the exact X, Y, and Z dimensions of what our mesh is like, at least simplified as a box. And here's the first step where it's important to keep in mind that the mesh that I'm using is orientated in the X direction. If your mesh, for whatever reason, is orientated in the Y or the Z direction, you're going to use the corresponding values there. But we're going to use the X, so we're going to right-click that and promote to variable. We'll call that something like X length. And now we have that available as a variable for using later on. Next up, we're going to go into a for loop, not a for each loop, just a normal for loop. The first index we'll keep at zero. The last index, however, we are going to need to calculate using our X length and our spline. So we'll drag in a reference to our spline. And from that, we'll get our spline length, which we will then divide by the length of our mesh. And then we want to truncate that to make sure it's just an integer because we can't have a float going into the index for this loop. This way, this loop will run the exact same amount of times that our mesh will fit into the length of our spline. In the loop, we're going to add a spline mesh component and now it starts making sense why we need to loop through what we're going to do here, the amount of times that our mesh fits into our spline, because we're going to add a new mesh for every single time it can fit in. The return value here will be that mesh component. So first things first, I'm going to set the collision enabled, and we're going to set that to just collision enabled. This way, the mesh that you're adding actually will have collision, which is usually relatively important. And then next up, we're going to set the forward axis to being the one that matches the direction of your mesh. So again, for me, in my case, that is the X axis. If your mesh is orientated in the Y or the Z, of course, you're going to want to change this around. But now we only have a component, which doesn't have an actual mesh in it yet. So that's the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to set the static mesh 
that this component is going to hold. And we already have a variable that holds whatever mesh that we're going to be using. So we can simply just drag that in and connect it up. And one last time we drag off the add spline mesh component, just like all these other three. And this one, we're going to set the start and end location. And for this, we're going to need to do a little bit of simple math. So stick with me. It's not that complicated. Going back to the for loop, we want to use our index, which is the amount of times we've looped through this. So the first time we're looping through, this index value is zero. Then when we loop through it a second time, this index value will be one. When we loop through it a third time, this index value will be two and so on and so forth. And we're going to multiply that value by our x length. This will give us the length along the spline for the starting position and starting rotation of our mesh. So we can drag in a new reference to our spline and we can get location at distance along the spline. And we'll keep that at a local and put in the answer from this multiplication into that. We'll also get the tangents at the distance along spline, which we'll use the same distance for. And those will go into the starting position and the starting tangent respectively. And then we also need some for the ending position and the ending tangent, which is simply the start of where the next mesh will start is also going to be the end of where this mesh will end. So we simply just drag over this index and we add one. And then we can copy this entire thing over and that's all there is to it. Now we have the end position and the end tangent. Except we're not quite done yet because the tangents will grow out of control and they will make things look buggy and messy and weird. So what we're gonna do instead is coming off the tangent, we'll get a clamp vector size and that will go into the tangent instead. And this vector size will be clamped a minimum of zero, that's fine. The maximum will be the X length, meaning that the tangent can never be longer than the actual mesh is, because that will then cause weird overlapping stretching artifacts and we don't want that. So that's why we're clamping this. And of course, if we're clamping the starting tangent, we also wanna be clamping the ending tangent. And that is everything there is to it. Once you compile this and you go back to your whatever level, you can just drag this in. And now we have a mesh variable here. We can just drag in the mesh that we want. And you can see at first it might look a little squashed, but now when we start moving these points around, we now have a pretty decent looking rail along our mesh. Well, I don't have uh, the materials set up for this right now, but of course I can just do that real quick. Give me a moment. Real quick made two materials to match this. And now we have a pretty good looking rail, which we can very easily change its shape. And if we play the game and we try to jump onto it, you can see it even has proper collision and everything works the way you would immediately expect this kind of thing to work. So altogether, that's relatively easy. If you need a little bit more help looking around at how this works, there is a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can download the project files with the mesh that I'm using here included as well. It definitely helps out the channel if you support me through Patreon. So that is very much appreciated if you want to do that. Next time we'll be back with some more interesting Unreal Engine stuff. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.